Hi, Daniel. Thanks very much. Um, I wanted to chat to you a little bit today about cloacas and um, how we have perhaps adapted the way we care for little girls with cloacas over the last several years and some of the things we may have learnt, which may be interesting to some of our families who have daughters with cloaca malformations. So to start off with, um, what would you say is the biggest emphasis when you're thinking about caring for a little girl with a cloaca with regard to how we work them up and how we think about reconstruction? Well, when we first uh, work a child with a cloaca, especially from the urologic standpoint, the thing that we worry the most, of course, is renal function. Based on studies that we did here, we know that cloaca patients are the ones with the higher risk for uh, renal malformation. And a lot of them are born with only one kidney. So we want to protect that renal function as best as we can and figure out a way to drain the urine uh, in an appropriate way, which in a sense protect their kidneys. Yeah, I mean, I, if I can speak from a pediatric surgery perspective, I mean, I think it has adapted a lot in that uh, previously a lot of chat was about fecal continence. And I think while that's important, I think we all agree that renal preservation or preserving kidneys is by far the most important part of what we do. And continence pieces come secondary to that. Um, I guess the next thing I'd speak about a little bit is how we drain the urine. I know previously we were very heavy handed on using um, you know, drainage with vaginostomies and I know that's something we've largely moved away from here. I don't think we've done a vaginostomy in three or four years now. Um, with the, with the follow-up we're able to do, do you feel that it's safe to now do catheterization rather than your vaginostomy from your perspective? Uh, yes, we've been able to find that uh, motivated family that doesn't want to have a surgery for drainage initially, like a vaginostomy or vasectomy, can achieve similar results um, with just intermittent catheterization through the common channel. Sometimes they do reach the vagina, sometimes they do reach the bladder, but what we can accomplish um, is by draining either of those structures is to drain the urine and we can follow them along with serial ultrasounds um, in, on the initial period where they are learning to catheterize to make sure that they are accomplished with their goal. And once we feel s safely that they are accomplished their goals on ultrasound, then we can start spacing out those ultrasounds. But I think it's important, no matter what type of way you decide to go for drainage the bladder to, to get the urine out to have close follow-up ultrasounds after the patients feel comfortable with which the mechanism they're doing. Yeah, I think the point you make about being able to achieve the same results without a surgery is a good one because we've certainly seen a number of kids here who've had complications from that surgery where the tubes have either not been in the right place or have been blocked or have fallen out. So if we can accomplish the same goals without having to subject them to the additional risks of surgery, little girls are going to have a lot of surgeries anyway. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah, and we feel like, like I said, that's why there's, there's so much important to make sure those patients are follow up and renal ultrasounds are being done before the definitive surgery because you may think that you accomplish drainage by giving a vaginospy or a vasectomy, but if you, and oftentimes we see, like you said, complications, those things can stenose, not drain well, and put the kidneys at risk during that period of time in between the initial surgery to divert to the final surgery to repair. And if people are not being followed, those things can be missed pretty easily. Great. And then the other thing I wanted to talk to you about a little bit today is the, the way we've changed the reconstructive approach over the last five years and written a little bit about that. As a urologist, how do you feel that impacts the decisions you can make sort of at the time of potty training and as we get children a little bit older now that we have longer follow-up on our patients? Yeah, I think we change our focus from length of common channel to adding length of the urethra as a, one of the key drivers in our uh, surgical decision-making. And by keeping a, a good urethra length and, and preventing bringing bladder necks too close to the perineum, we hope to have achieved a, a, a allowing patients to be more dry in the long run. Additionally, we also hope to sal salvage some of the urethras in order to allow patients to use that urethra for a catheterizable channel if they need that, thus preventing an additional surgery. I think both goals of continence and having a catheterizable channel are important because those can potentially give kids 
the ability to be dry in the long run, and if needed, catheterize for urethra, which are two of the key drivers that could lead some of the colleague patients to require surgery as in the long run, which is surgeries to achieve continence and surgeries to create catheterizable channels. So if, you, if we are able to, pre, to give kids those two things with the initial operation, then we are potentially saving them operations in the future in order to be dry. Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I would say the emphasis I've seen shift over, say, 10 years of doing this is that we now are much more considering the longer term care of these kids and making sure the operation we do up front really sets us up for success down the line, which doesn't hopefully obviates the need for further surgeries when the kids are five or six and getting ready for elementary school. Some of them may still need that, but many of them, as you say, could be managed with medical methods and clean intermittent catheterization, and we can get away from doing big surgeries before school. I think we're moved towards giving them the closest possible normal anatomy to give them a chance to potty train in a normal fashion as, as highest possible chance for that. And if those two things don't happen, we still have a pretty good chance of getting them dry without having to do another surgery. Fantastic. Good, well, Daniel, thank you very much. I really appreciate your time and um, look forward to chatting again soon. Sounds good, thank you.